Um, so this presentation is going to be on mindfulness. Um, mindfulness is an important topic right now, um, especially when it comes to everything that's going on in the world with the COVID-19. Um, we just want to welcome you to the workshop. It's going to be a two-hour workshop with myself and Karina. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Yorkville University student working through my graduate degree. And so I've been with Brie Love now for three months. Um, and I'll let in Karina introduce herself as well. Good morning, everyone. It's it's nice to see so many people uh, take advantage of the the workshop that uh, that uh, CMHA is is offering. Um, my name is Karina Rogers, and I am an intern as well with uh, with CMHA uh, slash Free Love Counseling. Um, I have been with uh, CMHA since uh, September, and I'm a, a student. Uh, slash teacher. I actually have uh, been t uh, teaching for over 20 years and decided to go back to university and do my do my master's in counseling and I wanted to try something a little different so I uh, wanted uh, to do my counseling internship outside the school system hence why I'm doing it at CMHA. So really happy to be here this morning. Uh, I'm going to ask you that to be uh, to be mindful of the fact that uh, this is uh, this is our first webinar and um, uh, you know, considering the, the circumstances, we're all kind of you know trying to kind of get through this uh, with the technology aspect. So for those of you who are, are saying and, and chatting and saying that that's your first time, <laughs> um, thumbs up uh, because uh, we know technology can kind of make us a little a little antsy. Uh, so uh, just just go with it, uh, relax, and and we hope you enjoy the, the next few hours. Um, I, I think what we'll do is uh, uh, um, is if we'll, it's a two-hour webinar, and we'll probably uh, um, stop probably around 11:30, 11, 11:35, uh, 11:45. We'll see how things go. We get through the slides uh, for some for some questions and, and answers. How does that sound to you, Stephanie? That well, sounds perfect. And um, during that question and answer period, when you raise your hand we'll be able to unmute you so that you can ask those questions to us directly or through the chat. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so just getting started, um, we wanted to provide you with a little bit of background information on, on Brie Love Counseling. Um, and we're in partnership with the Canadian Mental Health Association of New Brunswick. Um, go to the next slide. So Brie Love was established in 2012. And we take um, a trauma-informed approach. So we operate an integrative practice focused on community and private partnerships. And our specialties range anywhere from general mental health, um, art therapy, adversities, trauma, and um, nutritional psychology. And we work with individuals like 18 and above usually. Um, our focus is to help individuals build resilience and heal, and we achieve this by exploring opportunities for wellness and empowerment, as well as non-judgmental listening and customized treatment plans. And Brie Love contributes to the efforts of a resilient community. And since 2012, we focused our services on supporting and empowering wellness, awareness, and resilience. So we offer a few programs uh, through CM in partnership with CMHA and that's the community counseling program and that's a free program that's offered to the community and to individuals who may not necessarily have the resources available to them. Um, you need to be referred either through the community counseling program which we also offer as a it's like almost as if a walk-in clinic a one-day clinic where you walk in and have a session with us and and if we feel that you need further sessions then we would refer you to the community counseling program. Um, and that is conducted by all of our practicum students that are a part of Brie Love Counseling. And so we come on as master students and it's a part of our degree and our training and we work with those individuals um, at, at our Moncton location. Do you have anything to add to that, Karina? Uh, no, that's, you did a great job, Steph. Mm -hmm. So the topics we'll be, come, be covering are the mindful versus mindfulness when it's hard to be mindful, um, how to think mindfully, mindful experiences, um, talking about feelings, um, how to make the best of these situations, and how to put it all together. So what we could probably, uh, I think this would be a great opportunity right now, um, Sorry, it would be to lead you into um, a little bit of a, what we call a, a grounding activity. 
and uh, that would be for, for all us all of us to uh, to to center and and to um, all come together uh, hopefully uh, feeling a little bit more relaxed than we have maybe in the last few minutes as we're logging in and trying to figure out all the technical issues and things like that so I'm going to um, I'm going to invite you uh, to close your eyes um, if that's not comfortable for you to do, um, I'd like you just to maybe just stare down uh, at your desk or wherever you are right now on your laps. And um, I'd like for you to be sitting in a chair or make yourself comfortable if you're on the couch or if you're in your bed, just anywhere where you are, uh, I'd like for you to be, to be comfortable. I'm going to play some music and Stephanie will let me know if it's a little too loud. Can you hear that, Steph? Oh, I think that's it. I invite you to sense what it means to arrive here today. Again, I'm inviting you to close your eyes. I could Noticing where you are and know where you are right now, you are safe. You have breath, you are safe. Take a few long, deep breaths in through the nose. Out through the nose, breathing in, filling up the chest, breathing out, relaxing the shoulders, in through the nose, out through the nose. Just feel the movement of the breath collecting your attention. Try not to control the breath. The breath is just a natural rhythm. The last few weeks have been very trying and we may not have even noticed that we have breath. This uh, webinar, this moment is a time to just be aware, be aware of breath. Smooth. And as we breathe out, we're creating space. Notice the shoulders relax, the jaw relax. Let your senses be awake so that you're listening to the sounds around you. Listening inward, going inward and feeling and listening to the body. As you breathe in, being mindful of breath, Allowing the feelings, the thoughts to be there. No judgment, just let them go. No, noticing that you may want even to go a little, let go just a little bit. Loosening, softening the shoulders. Notice your hands. Are you holding tension in your hands? Loosen the fingers. Relax down through the belly. Feeling the deep breaths all the way in your torso. Becoming aware of the moment, the now. Listening and feeling the whole moment that we are in right now. Recognizing the gratitude despite the unknown, the uncertainty in the world. Recognizing gratitude that we are here and we are safe. Bring your attention to your heart. What is your heart saying? Listening inward to the heart and what it's trying to tell you. And just being with that. Sensing your intention, 
of why you are here, why did you come today, which is for many of us to explore mindfulness and compassion. Just being in the presence right now, trying to put everything else that's going on on hold just for a little while. And see if you can just notice a difference between now and the last five minutes. Are you more present? Are you more awake? And I invite you, if you haven't already done so, to gently open the eyes and come back to the space before we proceed with the rest of the seminar. Thank you, everyone. We're going to continue on with the uh, with the with our webinar. We'll start with. So I just want to bring attention to the fact that these topics are are helpful just in bringing an awareness. Um, and participation in, in the mindfulness skills. And um, that practice with Karina was like um, a great example of mindfulness and, and just bringing ourselves into the present moment. Um, there will be lots of opportunity, well, not lots, but like quite a few opportunities for reflection and, and questions along the way. Um, and as I said, one of us will always be monitoring the chats to make sure that we're keeping up with your questions. Um, and there's that raise hand function as well. Um, and, and so, um, we look forward to working through the rest of this with you guys. So mindful. <clears throat> so do you ever feel like your mind's just racing and especially lately with everything going on, like our nerves are worn and our energy has just been exhausted and the, our, there's a fog in our that's clouding our thoughts um some of us feel this way often and some of us feel that way and struggle with overwhelming emotions it's as if a knob is turned to maximum volume on which we're feeling those emotions on max volume so when we get angry sad or scared it shows up as a big powerful tidal wave that sweeps us off our feet um so sorry guys technical difficulties um, so just think of a time when you've been faced with these emotions in your life and like, can you try and explain to us what that felt like? Just use the chat function and, and give us a couple of words that, or statements about what it feels like, um, when you've been faced with such overwhelming emotions and maybe those emotions are happening now with everything that's going on. Lost and confused. Yeah, that's a good one. And especially in times like this, where there's lots of information going around. It, 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 it's definitely hard in these times and the loneliness um, is especially because when we're feeling anxiety, we feel like we need to keep it in. Mm -hmm. I think, I think a theme that's uh, what, what I'm appreciating as I'm, as I'm uh, uh, probably as guilty as many of you right now, uh, spending maybe uh, too much time watching the media um, um, and getting kind of caught up in all of that. But what I'm, what I'm, what I am finding is that there is solidarity in that uh, we, we're not alone. We, even though this is a time in, in unprecedented times where we feel so alone, uh, we are all together in this. And where, you know, we are. It's not just you, one person feeling lonely, like you're drowning, that you're fearful, that you have heightened anxiety, that you're uncertain. It's, it's that we, we know that we were all feeling like that together and knowing that I'm not the only one feeling that way, it kind of helps bring me some sort of uh, calm, if that makes sense in terms of in, in the storm that we're, that we're in right now is that, is that, you, and the, those are very valid feelings that all of you are, are feeling uh, because of the uncertainty and because of the, the, what is happening that we're, we're so not used to, you know, being asked to stay at home and, 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 and not sure what, what is going to happen. Absolutely. And I, I like uh, Michelle Livingston Kavalak, I, I hope I pronounced that properly, the I'm feeling like I'm in survival mode all the time. That's, def, I, I feel like that often sometimes too, especially now. And that's something that we'll talk about more later is uh, like the different parts of the brain. And, and um, that's a great description of what's happening is it is a threat system being activated and we are in a fight or flight 
when we're we're having experience of anxiety. Yeah. And therefore, because of as Stephanie said, it's a great point, and we're going to talk about the fight, fight, flight, or flight. Uh, when we're in that survival mode, it's difficult to be mindful. And so therefore, you know, you should, all of you should uh, uh, be proud of yourselves and, and give yourselves a, uh, so, some compassion that you're recognizing it and that you want some tools uh, uh, to help practice mindfulness or just to be, to be even on, you know, now that we have to use these different platforms like online platforms to connect uh, that you are, that you are, you have connected here today. There are, there are a hundred people who registered for this webinar uh, so that we're not, we, it, despite us being alone, we, again, re reinforcing that, that we're not alone in, in all of this. Mm -hmm. And so just um, from there, it, it's like these feelings hit us like a tsunami. Like they come with the force of, they come with such force that it is so overwhelming and it knocks us off our feet, as I mentioned earlier. And when that happens, understandably, understandably we become afraid to face those feelings um, because we don't want to get swept away by those emotions constantly. And the trouble is that when we try to suppress them or put a lid on those feelings, that's when they become the most overwhelming. And uh, there's a name for this. Um, and as it says on the slide, that's called mindful. Um, and, but there's also a tool that, become, that helps us become calmer and happier and more in touch with ourselves. And that's called mindfulness. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, mindfulness as a tool can help develop awareness for yourself and for others, as well as um, helping improve skills. Um, by participating and practicing these tools and techniques, on a regular basis, we can change how we manage these, the stress of everyday demands, as well as what's happening in the world and, and the added stress of, of the virus. So the hardest part is, is making that in, intention, to that commitment to intentionally commit to practicing and participating in mindfulness every day. Um, because although listening to this workshop can be helpful, the things that we share today um, may have a small impact, but unless you're willing to participate and practice in them ongoing, um, it's easy for these skills to, to leave us. And the principles of mindfulness are simple to learn, but like all things, they take practice to become habitual. So the next slide is, what is mindfulness? Um, and mindfulness is like the deliberate act of paying attention to what we're doing currently in the present moment. And it means paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the moment and non-judgmentally. And mindfulness does not conflict with any beliefs or values. And it's a practical way to notice thoughts, sensations, sights, sounds, smells, and anything we might not normally notice. The actual skill itself is pretty simple, but because it's so different than what we're used to um, and how we normally behave, it, it does take quite a bit of practice as learning any new skill does. Um, mindfulness can be simply noticing what we don't normally notice, um, like so what happens usually with anxiety is our heads are either too much focused on the past or the present or the past or the future and not in the present. So mindfulness is about bringing our awareness to that present moment um, and what we're doing right now and what is surrounding us right now to try and take our minds off of the future and past thinking. So a couple of examples, one might be like having anxiety when a friend asks us to go for dinner um, and then worrying about like how we're gonna, like what we're gonna wear or how we're gonna feel in, in the moment or if we're gonna embarrass ourselves as opposed to just recognizing that currently we're pretty hungry and we might actually enjoy being with our friends. So that, it, that fear and that worry is taking away from that moment. And so we want to be present and the more relatable uh, or I think it's more relatable um, example right now currently is is with this um, with this virus going around being concerned about getting the virus and passing it on to other people um, because that that is a fear right now and, it, and it's a normal fear that we should all be experiencing to some extent so it's about this mindfulness is about bringing ourselves to the moment and recognizing right now I'm not sick and I'm following the self quarantine and I'm doing the things that I need to do to protect myself. And so um, it may be beneficial for me to stop worrying about the future and, and be present with my fiance when we're having dinner together, as opposed to being on the internet 
the whole night reading about it and um, and worrying about it and giving ourselves that permission. Um, and being mindful helps us train our attention and our minds um, our, could, because our minds wander about 50% of the time. But every time we practice being mindful, we're exercising our attention muscle in our brains and becoming mentally fitter. So we can better, we can be in better relationships with ourselves and, um, and choosing to focus on what we want to focus on rather than automatically allowing our attention to be dominated by future focused thinking and things that overwhelm us. And um, just to add on to that, that, that little uh, three or four little minute activity that we just did where we, I would call that sort of a mindfulness meditation, mindfulness body scan. Um, that may not be something that, that uh, uh, fits, with, fits with your personality. And um, that probably for many of us today would have been challenging because we have been heightened. Our senses, we have been in that survival mode, like someone said. Um, and when you're in that survival mode, it's very hard to be in the present moment. So therefore asking you to, to it, mindfulness is a state of, of being. It's not necessarily always just exercising or uh, it is a state of mind. Uh, so rather than just a particular action. So asking you to be in tune with your body uh, during that exercise, probably, I would think that all of us wandered. It's normal. And, 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 but it doesn't mean that you didn't practice mindfulness, just the intent of trying to be mindful of your breath, of your body, of how the tension to try and bring compassion and energy to that part of your body is practicing uh, that, that certainly that mindfulness. It doesn't have to be meditation. It could be mindfulness speaking. The way we are probably now in, as we're in close quarters with, uh, with our partners, with our loved ones, uh, with family, uh, we, we often now probably are on edge but learning to be mindful of how we speak and our tone, that's an example of mindfulness. When we are eating, eating more slowly, not trying to eat with, uh, at, while we're lo looking at our phones or at the TV or the iPad or whatever it is, and tasting our food. Um, I'm guilty of that, absolutely. But those are, those are you know, it doesn't have to be just meditation and yoga. It can be, what, when we're going to go over more examples, but those are definitely, when you're in the moment, trying to be in the present moment. And again, recognizing that right now is a, a very difficult time to try to be in that moment. Thank you. For it's possible. <laughs> I, I really love um, that you made it like even in simple tasks like a uh, mindful like mindful eating that's something I, I practice a lot uh, because otherwise I'll just scarf food down without thinking about it because I'm always in such a rush mm -hmm. taking the intentional time to slow down for a minute and 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 focus on the act of eating and the act itself is practicing mindfulness like you said mm -hmm. All right, so the next slide is choosing and learning to influence our focus of attention. And so this one's about mindfulness being simple, um, simply described, but choosing and learning to influence our focus of attention. So we, we've done a lot of discussions so far about, about learning it as the simple part and then practicing it as the, the intentional commitment that we each need to, to take to, to see the benefits of mindfulness. Mindfulness is a skill that requires practice and most people get distracted or zone out or spend most of our daily lives being um, unmindful and running on autopilot. And as a result, um, mindfulness, we use mindfulness as a skill that, sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> we get lost, anxious, lost, anxious and frustrated, which is what we saw in the chat is a lot of people are experiencing feelings of feeling um, emotions and feelings of being lost and not knowing what to do. Um, and through the practice of mindfulness, it's possible to, to develop these new habits that increase a greater sense of choice and confidence. And mindfulness gives us the choice, gives us a choice to not have to go into the same old habits that may have caused us further problems in the past. <clears throat> um, and I, I really liked um, what Karina said like that. We often are on autopilot, like we, we are rushing to eat or we're rushing to go places as opposed to being mindfully in those moments. Um, and so through the practice of mindfulness, um, 
It's not about gaining immediate control or removing or fixing unpleasant experience, but rather it's about aiming to develop skills that put us in a better position to, to change those habits of distress and to, to make better choices and, um, and have more positive outcomes. So when it's hard to be mindful, um, we talked about this briefly, like the getting distracted or zoning out. And at points in our lives, we all have to cope with painful experiences, which make it harder to be to be mindful because um, those experience are, experiences are very real. Um, and it can be like a physical thing, like a bee sting or a broken arm or feeling unsafe. Um, and, and feeling sadness or anger. And in both of these cases, the pain is often unavoidable and unpredictable. And so we can always anticipate that, <clears throat> we can't always anticipate these things happening or these painful experiences or overwhelming um, situations. Um, and often the best that we can do is use the coping skills that we have and hope that they work. So a part of like introducing mindfulness and committing to be intentional is that if we're using it every day, maybe in those stressful situations, this coping skill will become a new habit, a new habitual way of going to, going to a mindfulness thing instead of reacting to a negative experience. And this isn't always easy. Um, it's providing... Um, <clears throat> This isn't always easy. Most of our coping skills that have been taught to us were taught in early age, and they're usually short term, and but not always effective. And um, some negative ones consist uh, personally, like I like I always used to eat as a coping mechanism, and so I have to be intentional about paying attention to whether I'm using eating as a uh, coping mechanism to feel comfort and safety, or whether I'm doing it because I'm hungry. So it's just being intentional, intentionally aware of what's happening. And, and what my why is behind that. Um, and although those like and although eating has been helpful in the past and it's brought me comfort and, and although these other experiences have brought us comfort and coping skills, they've also been left unchallenged and without reflection. So leading to unhelpful forms of reacting versus reflective helpful responses. Um, it can be even harder to respond when the emotional and physical pains are, are intense and frequent and, and more frequent than it is for other people. So often these situations feel like they'll never end and the feelings come on quickly and it feels, as we've mentioned, that like overwhelming tidal wave. <clears throat> and um, so like these are all very reasonable and understandable reactions like the unhealthy coping mechanisms because they as we mentioned are ones that we've learned in early childhood they've become habitual they are part of us and they are a response to very real negative emotions and experiences so when a person is in emotional pain it's hard to be rational and to think of a healthier and more helpful situation and um so what mindfulness does for us is give us that space to to stop and think for a moment that there might be a more helpful approach I'd, uh, I'd like just to uh, talk about a little bit about uh, slide six and seven too, uh, where we talked about just the autopilot. And I want to just throw some scenarios out for you. And some of you might get a little chuckle out of these, uh, mm -hmm. because I think we're all guilty of these. Uh, while driving or uh, traveling, you don't remember which road you took to get, some, to, to, get to the place, your destination. We're probably all guilty of that. Um, while having a conversation, you suddenly realize that you don't know what the other person is talking about. So those are examples of when we're mindless or we're kind of on autopilot or we're, or we're not being mindful of the current situations. While having a conversation, you are already thinking about what you will be saying next, even before the other person has even finished speaking. While reading, you suddenly realize that you uh, have uh, while reading, you suddenly realize that you've been thinking about something else and you have no idea what you just read. While walking in a room, you suddenly forget what you came in the room to get. <laughs> After putting something down, you can't remember where you just put it. <laughs> After taking a shower, while taking a shower, you're already planning what you have to do later. You forget you washed your hair, shaved your legs, your armpits, uh, or conditioned your hair or not. Okay, those are, again, all examples of uh, fairly harmless 
Uh, but we often when we're uh, when we we're an override with our emotions, uh, it, it, we're not in the present moment. And when we're when we're not in the present moment, it's it's we cannot be mindful. So we're either in the past or or we're in the future. And I uh, just want to add a little bit about what Stephanie really explained in terms of our coping skills. Um, and a lot of our, as she said, a lot of our coping skills come from our childhood uh, experiences. So that often what happens is that our brains and our belief system get shaped by our childhood experiences and not always childhood. It could be even in late life, depending on relationships that you've had. So for example, if you, if you were in a situation where you were told that you were, you were loved and you were uh, a good person, you're going to have a belief system that that's, that's you, you I'm a good person. Uh, however, if you've been, uh, if you were raised or, or in a relationship where uh, you were told that you are not worthy, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, or you're not pretty enough, uh, you often develop those belief systems and they, they, they come, they stay with us. And therefore, as Stephanie said, we develop coping mechanisms uh, to, to help us cope with uh, or coping strategies. Um, you know, if you are told that if you were if you were told that you weren't good enough, or if you were uh, physically abused as a child, uh, you're going to develop coping strategies that are always not health, healthy to to deal with those situations. And um, we then often those coping strategies will put us in situations often where it's difficult for us to be again in the present moment. And we tend to, we tend, they will have an impact and usually negatively on how we're, how, how we're going to make the, the choices that we make, if that makes sense. Um, the idea of the mindfulness and what I, we're going to practice in a little bit here after with another guided meditation or his body scan is, is recognizing this. Because, uh, you know, what can we do if we have those belief systems? Okay, it is what it is, but we want to be able to uh, recognize them and allow them to be there. And then, of course, uh, change the dialogue a little bit that, so that we can actually have compassion for ourselves. Because a lot of times we have that negative here. It's always going, we can't turn it off. But we want to be able to, you know, turn the volume down on that and, and really change that tsunami more into a nice soft, sunny, kind of smooth sailing day. That if those analogies make sense. Just today, uh, I wasn't going to tell this story, Karina, but talking about the not being mindful, I was anxious about today. Uh, and I've just been dealing with anxiety about the whole thing anyways. And, and I got out of the shower and I started brushing my hair and I realized I didn't take the conditioner out of my hair. So I had to get back in the shower and, and take the conditioner out. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all done that. I am <laughs> <laughs> um, just looking back to the chats as well. And I see like another Natalie way saying, um, like not being able to control the outcome. Another thing that mindfulness does for us that um, I've really been able to appreciate is, is just show us what is in our control because that there, there are things that are out of our control. And especially right now in the world, we can't control everything and we can't control what others do, but we can pay attention to what is in our control. Um, and, and those things can be as simple as we are in control of what we eat and what we put in our body and, and we're in control of going outdoors and, and what we do and our, the activities that we choose to do or the people that we choose to talk to and, and mindfulness is a, a good way of bringing us into that moment and, and, um, and focusing on what is in our control as opposed to what's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that control, especially right now where we're, we're, up, we're being told to, uh, to, sell, to, to have physical distance, uh, you know, not to go to work, the anxiety of how we're going to, to pay, to, we have a lot of how are we going to pay bills, how when you're on the phone waiting for the EI and then we're hearing, you know, the, of the numbers of, of, pe of people that, you know, had to, to make, make, the, the the claims for EI and so yes we've lost a lot of that control and uh, but then we have to look at yes we have but there are some ways in which we do have control and as Stephanie said we have control of 
uh, how we are going to react. We have control of our behavior. We have control that how many times we wash our hands. We have control if we are going to physically do the do, do physical distancing. We have control of practicing those safe practices. Uh, and, and we have control of how our new normal is going to look for however long it's going to be. We can, we can control that in terms of how is that gonna look for us so that it's safe and healthy and that I can reduce the anxiety levels that, that, that I'm experiencing. Um, and again, we have control of how we're going to um, connect with people. It's going to look different, absolutely. Um, but you know, can we text more? Can we make more phone calls? Can we, can we have those uh, and focus on sort of the, the, the new type of present that, we're, that we are creating for ourselves? And, and challenging. The big one I think for with mindfulness is is we, we can really allow our brains to go down that 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 deep dark hole and challenging those thoughts of, you know, this is going to eventually get better. Uh, we are going to get through this. Uh, it's going to be, we don't know how long it is, but it will get better. And it, I think our new normal is going to look different. Um, and knowing that, you know, the, the worst case can, they're, you know, always going to the worst case that, you know, we're often uh, catastrophized, but knowing that you know, our, we can do our own little bit to, to, make it, to, to make it better for ourselves and for others. Um, so just moving on to the next slide. Um, this slide's about acceptance and, and, uh, and mindfulness and, and being curious, letting go and accepting what is happening in our lives. Um, and we get it. It's challenging to to challenge our it's it's a challenging to challenge our thoughts in situations where we're overwhelmed or our emotions are stronger or our emotions feel stronger than we are. Um, so sometimes it helps to ask ourselves some thought provoking questions um, to help us understand how we're feeling and um, what we're thinking and urgent behaviors. So in this particular situation and for others involved. And letting go of our need for certainty and accepting uncertainty um, as being an inevitable part of life can be easier said than done. So when demanding certainty and predictability, our attention is very future focused as our mind worries in an attempt to gain certainty. Um, being uncertain, like this is again, like we were just talking about, uh, whatever is not in our control and, and not having that control and feeling uncertain and uh, fearing the unknown that's when we become anxious and future focused and so a lot of this is about letting go of that accepting that it's there uh, and and being curious and noticing and being like okay why am I feeling this way I'm feeling this way because I don't know what's going to happen and I don't know what my life's going to look like and that's okay like that's that's a fair thing to be anxious about but then acknowledging it and then letting it go and being like I don't need to focus on that right now and I can focus on it later when it needs my attention more promptly. Um, so we're going to go over a five-step process that can help us address this uncertainty. Um, and that starts with uh, being aware. So like the first step is recognizing and acknowledging when we're feeling the need to have certainty and wanting to use worry to achieve this. Um, rather, So that's the being aware part and um, being aware that we want certainty. And then the step two is then making the active choice not to respond to that worry um, and not responding to that need and instead letting it go and accepting that uncertainty and just accepting that we are in a time of uncertainty and it's uncomfortable and it's okay for that to be uncomfortable and then um, turning our attention back again to the present focused rather than future focused and being in that mindful place and being more present can help bring bring about an acceptance of uncertainty. So if you're focused on the present rather than the future, then uncertainty about the future is less likely to bother us. Um, this then brings us to step number five, where obviously our minds are gonna drift back and forth and they're gonna um, drift back to wanting certainty and control. That's human nature, but just repeating these steps again of being aware, not responding, letting go of the need for certainty and maintaining a non-judgmental perspective um, Karina talked about this a lot earlier about when we're not, when, when our mind is drifting, just being compassionate with ourselves and saying, it's okay that our mind drifted. It's, it's normal. It's a normal process for our minds to want to go back to control and certainty because that's where we're comfortable. But just saying, okay, it drifted. Let's bring our attention back in a very like gentle, 
an intentional way that is uh, like not judging yourself or being hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the five steps. So the being aware, not reacting, letting go, being present focused as opposed to future focused, and then dealing with your wandering mind in a gentle, intentional and non-judgmental way. And, you know, I, I really, I really, uh, um, I'm very happy to see these five steps, but, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a type of person that I guess I'm, I like calling a spade a spade. And it's, it's about also saying it's okay for all of us to feel exactly how every single one of you are feeling. And some of you have voiced that already. Um, I'm scared. I'm uncertain. I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like the world is, is going to end. Uh, you know, is it, is, is I, I'm, I'm scared that I'm not going to be able to pay the bills. Um, these are all real things that are happening. And for us to say, Oh, well, just be aware of it. It's going to be okay. Um, and it's all, it, that's not what we're trying to say here today. We're saying that it is this, these are very difficult times and this is hard. What is happening right now is very difficult uh, and it's okay to re recognize and be aware of that. Uh, how we react to it and as we can have an impact on, on our day and because we can only be in the moment and we don't know what's going to happen two weeks, four weeks down the road. I do know that this is going to get better. Uh, but in the meantime, it's that, you know, that little dash in the meantime, this is where we have to say, okay, I am feeling scared and talking to yourself or talking to someone else about it, saying I'm scared. And, and then within that, during your day, try to find some things that bring you happiness to be present focused. Like I had a good breakfast. I have a warm bed. I'm having, I can still, I still have my medications. I still have family. Even if I'm living alone, I still can connect with people. I'm in a safe place and, 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 and try to deal with, you know, all these thoughts coming in, but just recognize them without, you know, beating yourself up over them and saying right now things are okay. Even though they're not easy, it's still okay. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out, Karina. That was, uh, uh, I, that's, that's a really important point. It, it is, the reality is, is that this is a scary time. And a part of accepting those emotions isn't trying to pretend that they're not there, but accepting that they are real. Like it is, it is terrifying and scary. So this one is like thinking mindfully, this slide. And so mindfulness is awareness and focus attention create changes in the brain that help us regulate emotions. So uh, neuropsychology, plays a big part in mindfulness. There's been a lot of research come out that says mindfulness plays a large role in um, where our brain engages like to help us with um, with regulating our emotions. So we have in our our old brain or um, our mammalian brain is is the original brain and that's where all of our emotions are and then that's connected to our prefrontal cortex and when we're in our prefrontal cortex is in charge of paying attention to emotional regulation. So when we're anxious, our emotional brain is flooding us and we're not as capable of making rational and logical decisions. And um, so mindfulness plays a role here in helping us be calm enough so that we have access to that rational brain. And this happens by helping all of our part, all parts of our brain to work together by calming our brain. Um, and a simple understanding of the brain can help us understand understand what's happening with the overwhelmingness. So we're going to discuss that a little bit in the next couple of slides and how we can respond uh, to help our brains work together as a whole. Um, <clears throat> do, do you have anything else to say on that? No, that's great, Steph. So the negative bias of the brain. Um, our brain has, an, uh, has a, a bias towards negativity and that's a part of survival skills. Again, like being in that survival mode. Um, our brain evolutionarily has has developed techniques and skills to um, to to point out what's dangerous to us and to point out things that are scary and so to focus on those things and that was our our brain's way of protecting us um, when we needed it and we don't need that as much anymore but our brain um, so being mindful helps us 
remind our brain that we don't always need these survival skills to be turned on, but it wants to be in that fight, fight, or freeze place, um, creating a lot of suffering that's left unchecked. So it's about checking that and asking ourselves whether this is, um, like, do we need to be scared in this current moment? And sometimes the answer is yes, and, and sometimes it's no. Um, so for example, if um, somebody comes up and scares you, like as a, as a trick, your initial reaction emotionally is to be scared, but then you would check it and be like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm not actually in danger. And so that's, that's an example of mindfully recognizing your surroundings and checking in with um, the potential danger there and realizing you're not actually in danger and self-soothing through that. Um, and the more that we practice mindfulness, again, like the more that our brain will remember it because we're, we're working that memory part of our brain um, and adding, adding mindfulness as a coping skill that we will naturally draw on in stressful situations. And, you know, I talked a little earlier about the childhood experiences and, and a lot of our, what we call our baggage uh, growing up. Uh, a, a lot of what happens is that because of these, these childhood experiences and because of, of our uh, uh, tra um, traumas, our brain naturally, uh, uh, naturally defaults and goes to the fight, flight, or freeze. And so even though we, um, without us even really recognizing it, so un until we become aware of it, we will continue to do the same, the same type of, of, of responses or behaviors. So it's almost like a brain injury, really, is what I'm talking about. And, and until we realize that, you know, if you, if you have, uh, if, you, if you were, again, if you have low self-esteem, if, if you had a lot of childhood adversity, if you were told that you weren't good enough, if you had to uh, uh, divorce, all of these, get, you know, they, they, they kind of have, we have these little, we have these injuries and our brain obviously will then, we go into that fight, flight or freeze uh, unknowingly. So for example, uh, you know, I grew up where um, uh, I, I, spent, I spent most of my, my childhood, childhood in and out of foster care. Um, and so that had an impact in terms of my self-esteem and some of the behaviors that I had uh, into my late twenties, early thirties. And until I became mindful of that, I was often in, I would say I was often in flight or fight mode. And uh, when you're in fight or flight mode or freeze, any of the three, you cannot be mindful. Uh, and I had to kind of learn that. And then I had to really, you said, it's almost like when I was, you have to rewire the brain. It really is trying to change the behaviors, but you can only change the behaviors until you are mindful of them and have the impact that they're having on your life. And so just being here today, going back to that of learning, being in the moment, uh, you know, when, when, uh, when I, when I, when I uh, respond in anger, which is the, which is the fight, uh, why am I responding that way? And if I can be cognizant of why, often then I can, you know, recognize that without always creating that space and saying, okay, do I always have to react this way? Creating that space, that pause, so that I make better choices. I don't have to yell. I don't have to throw something. I don't have to lose lose my temper. I can, you know, I can be mindful and make better choices. Uh, and I hope that makes sense. I know it's a little bit de in depth and maybe a little bit more on into trauma, but uh, I feel mindfulness is a bit of that as well. Um, so that brings us to the next slide, which is the reasoning with the self. So um, at different times, we're all impacted and influenced both by our emotional brain um, as well as our, our reasoning logical brain. And, and then again, um, a combination of the two of those. So that brings us to the concept that there are three different ways that we think as human beings. And so there's the reasoning and the logical self. So that's the one that is, there's little emotion involved in that. Um, it refers to the self that's thinking logically and factually about different situations. Um, and it, then there's the emotional brain. And so that is less logical and practical. And it's more, uh, when we're thinking with our emotional brain, it's usually very intense and influential on what we're doing. And then there's the authentic self. And the authentic self is a combination of the two. And so it's being able to logically think and feel at the same time. And so an example of this would be um, like being able to make decisions that are um, 
considering considering consequences to actions and and good or bad and not making a decision based on whether it's the decision that makes the most sense or isn't going to hurt the most people but um, a decision about what's in, what's in the best interest like what is the best decision here is it what you want or what you what you would feel better with and it, and so we all have this ability to access this and what mindfulness does is help us be our authentic self more often because it's it brings us back to a place where we're both thinking and feeling at the same time same time and and being our authentic selves more often um, and so we have like a reflection question here. So you guys can answer this again in the chat. And that is, uh, have you ever found yourself in a situation that might have felt difficult, um, but you just knew what you had to do? So perhaps it wasn't the easiest thing to do or what you really wanted to do, but you knew that it was the right thing to do. And can you guys give us some examples of that? This is really along the lines of, uh, of uh, belonging versus fitting in. So the authentic self is really where you you come to belong versus fitting in. Fitting in often will, will mold our behavior to fit in. And when we belong is because we know we are uh, true to ourselves and we're going to, we're not going to compromise our values or our beliefs based on, on, on uh, other people. Leaving a job, that's a, that's a good one that a lot of people don't think about is sometimes when a job isn't good for our mental health, um we just have to make that decision because it's the right thing to do even if it's hard because we care about the people that we work with and again the like the relationships like ending a relationship when you know it's not working that that's one of the hardest ones i find um it, and that can go into personal relationships that aren't just uh romantic it can be friendships as well uh when it's just not working and you just have to take a step back those are really hard decisions to make getting help for mental health issues. I think we can all relate to that and what's bringing us here today even. Um, that, that again is really hard. It's hard emotionally, it's hard logically, um, but it's a combination of knowing that it's the right thing and, and bringing yourself back to that authentic self. Um, and it takes a lot of courage and strength to do that. Um, on, on this track, I just wanna let you all know, um, there is gonna be a self-compassion workshop this Friday. Um, and so in the self-compassion, there'll be a lot of talking about um, how to be easy on yourself and how to change the language of self-talk um, and how to, to, to just love on yourself a little bit. And so that is going to take place on Friday. And if you're interested in attending that one, you can call CMHA New Brunswick and, um, and get added to that list as well. And then um, Karina, if, you, if there's no more questions, uh, we'll leave it open just for another second. And then Karina's going to take the lead for the second half of the webinar um, and, and lead us through some more on mindfulness. Before I continue, I'd like for us to do another little activity. Um, There's a question about the sign up. I just wanted to answer that really quick. Sure. Um, so I, I don't believe that there is an online one, but you can call uh, CMHA and, and they'll be able to sign you up for that workshop on Friday. Okay, sorry, Karina. No, no, it's okay. Um, so the, the activity that I'd like you to do now, if you can, just exactly where you are, uh, often when we're feeling overwhelmed and, uh, and, we, and we feel our anxiety creeping up, we can uh, do something called the five senses. And many of you have heard of that. Uh, so that is um, something that you can, so five things, something that you can see, uh, something that you can that you feel uh something that you can hear and if you have uh you know a drink or something right now something that you can taste and smell so those are those are five uh, uh kind of what we call uh, again uh, practices that that can help you um ground yourself you know look around what can i see uh what can i feel what can i hear what can i taste and what can i smell uh, that's a something again a simple activity that uh, that can help ground us or, or bring us uh, back to where our, our not as not not let that anxiety creep up as much um, so here we have that's kind of a mindfulness a mindfulness experience um, 
it's not always easy to, to as Stephanie just said, to be non-judging. Uh, in fact, often our, our negative, our inner dialogue is uh, habits of judging and criticize, criticizing, which are deeply ingrained. And often that comes from, come from the, those core beliefs that we've developed as children and young adults. Um, if we are, when we are judging ourselves or when we are judging others, so it's not just ourselves, but when we are judging others or ourselves, uh, we, we are not able to be mindful and therefore it's hard to have kindness and compassion towards ourselves and others. And it's it, often we, 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 t we think that uh, we, we're, we have that kind of kindness and compassion, uh, but we don't realize sometimes how hard we are on ourselves. So it's that, you know, am I friendly to myself? Am I welcoming? Am I, do I love myself unconditionally? Do, do I forgive myself? Uh, it's, it's, it, it's a deep human capacity and it's, it's very important to, in your mindfulness practice, to have that kindness and compassion towards yourself. Uh, and again, it's admitting, allowing that. Um, you know, when we practice our meditation earlier is, okay, I am feeling I am feeling fearful and it's okay to feel, 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 feel fearful. I am feeling anxiety. Allow it, recognize it and allow it. And that's a way that you can be more mindful. I, it's a lot easier said than done. If it was that easy, we wouldn't be here, right? Uh, so again, it's, it's just the intent of trying to practice that um, and, and trying to curb that self-criticism. Um, it's, it's, um, it's very difficult and we realize that, but the intent is there and it, it, it will, that's compassion will, will and, and um, love will come. Um, sitting with kindness and compassion can help support you through the impacts of, you know, deep habits of judging uh, and criticism. Being intentional and giving yourself permission to, uh, to be kind and compassionate with yourself. Uh, support you in the the how of of uh, uh, tr being truly non-judgmental. Uh, another way of promoting this is uh, uh, addressing the behaviors and and how you uh, you treat yourself. You know, instead of saying, you know, oh man, I why 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 am I eating so much? Why am I why am I why can't I get myself up? Why can't I get myself dressed today? Is what again answer the question, but again providing that. Uh, give yourself some cut yourself some slack these are trying times uh and saying okay yeah it's 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 difficult for me to get a routine right now it's difficult for me to have a shower and get up and get dressed when really what why well that routine is important and being mindful of a routine uh will, will, will keep us again more centered and 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 more mindful and not not falling into that negative uh, deeper spot uh, spiral so feelings, lovely feelings. Um, do you treat yourself as someone deserving self-care and validation for your efforts or do you neglect yourself and withdraw from overwhelming feelings? And um, that's a reflection question. Uh, we can, we can, uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing. And Stephanie, I'm not able to see the responses. So if you wouldn't mind uh, watching for the responses there, do you treat yourself as someone self deserving of self care of your efforts or do you neglect? So if people could just answer with a yes or no, yes, I do. I treat myself uh, with self care validation or no, I'm often, uh, I treat myself harshly and I uh, kind of suppress my overwhelming feelings. Yes or no. So there's been a few yeses so far, which is nice to see. And then see. Um, no, they suppress them. Mm -hmm. There's some more yeses coming in, which is great to see. Okay. So we have, I'm happy to see the yeses uh, because that, that is important in terms of uh, you know, giving ourselves that self self care and validation for our efforts and and recognizing our strengths. It's mm -hmm. all about recognizing our strengths. There's more fifty fifties, and like it, it depends yeah. on the situation. Okay, yeah. Um, so self care and validating our efforts are important parts of everyday experience, which makes us feel good about ourselves and our lives. Um, 
I, I really uh, wanted to mention here, I, uh, feelings, our feelings are not the enemy. It's when we suppress the feelings or we withdraw from our feelings that then we, that's where we kind of tend to get in a little bit of, of hot water. Um, so our challenge is, is basically uh, to learn how to use our emotions to inform our thoughts uh, without letting our emotions determine our behavior. So basically, you know, in layman's terms, um, we have the power to understand and manage our emotions and feelings without being controlled by them. Um, and that's important because often we will, uh, when, we, when we withdraw or we, or we, we suppress our feelings, uh, it's, it, you, there's usually an under, under layer of, 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 of why that is. And then we end up, we end up dealing with our feelings instead of uh, we avoid them. And then we, we develop those unhealthy coping mechanisms that we talked about earlier. So we're not mindful of our feelings and just be, being aware of them. We simply say, okay, uh, you know, that's where we're getting into people, you know, being addicted to the internet, shopping addictions, eating addictions. Uh, and because we're not being mindful of what is going around us and we're trying to always avoid it. Um, so being in touch with your feelings can help you surf the wave uh, of mindful leading to mindfulness. Um, feelings add color to our lives, uh, yet we often do not notice them until they bring us either pleasure or pain. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to bring attention to one comment. Um, it was uh, Miranda Davenport, and she said, uh, she, it's a yes and no, but getting better at noticing it like that that is mindfulness like that the getting better at, at noticing it is as is, is something that mindfulness can do for us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely just just being a try, a trying to be aware mm -hmm. um, are you ready for the next slide yes ma'am let's talk about feelings um, so naming the emotion means we can figure out what to do about it. Um, um, so feelings add color to our lives, yet we often do not notice them until they bring us either pleasure or pain. Uh, by, bringing mindful, by, by bringing mindful awareness to our feelings, we often learn to notice and label them. Um, so labeling feelings can appreciate pleasant moments to curious and be open, um, but they can also create strong feelings uh, that can be often uh, overlooked. Have you ever noticed that you often don't know what you feel? Can, it, can we have that as a reflection question? If you can answer yes or no, do you notice often that you're feeling something but you can't name it? So one person said no and another said all the time. Okay. Totally yes. So do you often feel like you're walking around in emotional fog knowing that you feel bad or upset but not being able to really name the emotion you're feeling? If you don't know what you're feeling, it's really hard to do anything about it or help yourself uh, to tolerate it. Once you put a name on emotions, you can figure out what to do about it. Does anybody know the five emotions? Anger. Sad sadness. Joy. Joy. Oh, sad, happy, anxious, and anger. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's some more coming in. Happy, sad, angry, and difference. Yeah. Fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of these right now is definitely, I would think, things that we're that that we would be feeling. Let's get technical. Um, this is a part of the brain that uh, that I find uh, find interesting, and I'm going to talk a little bit here as well about uh, uh, something called flipping our lids. I think we're all probably guilty of of, of flipping the lid. Uh, so emotions are electrical and chemical signs in your body that alert you to what's happening. Um, these often begin with your sense of sight, touch, hear, smell, and taste. So that was why earlier I asked uh, if you could look around the room. And these are things when you really feel that you're in a heightened sense of anxiety. If you can, you know, name things that you can see, touch, hear, smell, and taste. Um, and these, these, the, uh, these signals travel to your brain. And we're gonna get into uh, talking about um, um, different parts of the brain. So if I can get, uh, I know you, you all can see me and I know we all can't see you, but this is uh, something that we can practice together. If everybody can kind of hold up their hand, we're gonna, we're gonna visually uh, talk about the parts of the brain. And this is a great, uh, especially if you have children or if you want to teach this to your to your your spouse or your partner, it's a great way. This is by Dan Segal, a neuro uh, neuropsychologist, 
and uh, so your hand, so the bottom part of your hand here is what we're, we're going to call the wrist. And this is the spinal cord. So we're going to say this is the spinal cord going into our, our skull. This is like the brain stem. And our thumb is called our limbic system. Okay, and our limbic system we talked about earlier, uh, it really helps us control the fight, flight, or freeze mode that we're in right now. <laughs> so uh, that is an important uh, part of our, our brain. So it specializes in observing and processing emotions. Uh, it's connected to the rest of your brain and to your body. So there's always that emotional response. So remember here, we have the brain stem, which is our wrist, our thumb, which is our, going to be our limbic system, fight, flight, or freeze. And then we have our fingers. Our fingers are our prefrontal cortex. Okay, and the prefrontal cortex regulates, helps regulate the emotions. So when we are uh, in fight, flight, or freeze mode, we talked about that earlier when we're fight, flight, or freeze. So if we feel fearful, if we are uh, ready to attack, uh, uh, you know, when we get upset, we, we see red, we're easily triggered when we're having road rage, all of these life scenarios, those flight, flight, or freeze, we cannot be mindful. And therefore our limbic system is not in sync with our prefrontal cortex and we flip the lid. And what we, and as, again, as I talked to you about our, our limbic system, the fight, flight, or freeze, those are a lot of times our learned behaviors, learned behaviors from childhood, but we can unlearn them. And when we have this, we are flipping the lid. So then from when we flip the lid, we are not in our rational reasoning mind. And when we are not rational or reasoning, we flip the lid. And we want to be able to be more rational, so to have our prefrontal cortex in, in sync with our limbic system. We want, we want these in sync, so we don't want this. When we get this, we can't reason, we can't, we can't be rational. And mindfulness uh, activates the prefrontal cortex. There's science behind this. So we want to activate that prefrontal cortex so that instead of maybe, oh, oh I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really flip out at my partner here, uh, no, I'm not going to do that because that's going to cause stress and tension. I'm going to, what can I do? I can walk away. I can be mindful of what I say, what I speak. I can take a time out and I'm going to not flip my lid. Now, is it possible that we're always, this is never going to happen? Again, as I said, the spade, I call a spade a spade. We're going to flip our lids. That's life. But the more we are aware, when someone just said earlier, I'm more aware of it. We want to be able to have our prefrontal cortex in sync with our limbic system. And I know a lot of this, as I said, is learned behavior from childhood's adverse experiences, but we can be more mindful of it and learn to choose pause. This is a pause here. What am I going to do? When I flip the lid, I react. When I have a pause, I'm not reacting. I'm thinking, I'm making different choices. Okay, so I hope that, 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 that imagery uh, will, will help. Um, so the mindfulness, uh, let's us notice what is happening and gives us some perspective. So whether that's going for a walk, whether that's noticing the five senses, whether that's thinking, uh, doing a body scan, asking questions to, to make better choices. And that leads us to our next slide, which kind of ties right into what I just talked about. Dan Segal, the, 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 uh, the neuropsychologist who really, uh, I really like his analogy of the, the flipping the lid, because again, we're gonna stop and take a pause, take a breath, breathing, observe what you're noticing, and then, you know, the P I like, proceed with the rest of your day, like, but it is letting go or making, making those, those different choices. Um, again, if we put this into, uh, you know, real life context of what we're living right now, uh, we're agitated, we're kind of in that fear, in that fight, flight, or freeze mode because of the situation of with the COVID-19 and all of the, the, how the world is being impacted, uh, we, can, we can stop and say, how am I feeling? I'm feeling fearful, I'm feeling uncertain, I'm feeling overwhelmed, uh, and then breathe. Breathe through it. Allow yourself to feel it. Observe it without judgment. And then the P is, okay, yes, I'm feeling this way, but I can 
at this time and time, present time, I can make choices that are going to have an impact on the right now and what I can do right now, not next week. Because if you're thinking about next week, if you're thinking about last week, you're not able to be here today. You're not able to be in the moment. And that's a lot of the time, that's where our, our brain is. We're in the present or we're in the past, uh, but we're not in the moment. And it, that, only may, that only may happen for you five minutes out of today or 10 minutes, but it's the intent. And, and that will build. And, and, and just activating that mindfulness uh, will make things uh, uh, more pleasant. Uh, just to add to that too, there's like when you're observing, there's a saying that goes, um, if, you, if you can name a thought or a feeling, we're more able to tame it. So like when we take that breath, so intentionally being like, okay, what am I feeling right now? And it's like, I'm feeling angry or hurt because you said this, where you might not have been able to say that before you stopped and took that breath. And then, and so just um, like naming it and labeling what you're feeling and thinking is also another way of being mindful and taming, taming our thoughts and behaviors. Mm -hmm. I like that. Name it, you can tame it. That's a good catch. Catchy, catchy phrase. So again, making the best of it, knowing that we are going to sometimes flip the lid or half, you know, maybe kind of say something, do something, or 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 uh, make a choice that's not at the best at the time. But knowing that uh, uh, you're not always back to square one. So if there's an intent, um, the, you're not starting back at you know at, at ground zero. Uh, it's a steady process. Uh, two steps forward, one step back. And my goodness, if that's not more appropriate, that expression now, you know, in what we're living, uh, it's, 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 we, this is going to be, you know, steps back, step forward, but we are, we are going to get to the other side of this. Um, the ups and downs. So developing new skills is challenging. And uh, with every practice, we may face challenges that will throw us off balance and we're human and, and that we, we will make, you know, things are not always going to, not always going to be perfect. Um, um, we have down days and we're going to have better days. And even after today, you may, you know, uh, flip your lid, but knowing that you're, you're like, okay, I want to, I, why am I flipping? You know, what am I feeling and making those choices? So, Oh, maybe I didn't go in that red zone today. Maybe I just went, you know, in the yellow zone and, and just being, being mindful of that. Um, I'd like to um, do another second uh, body scan guided meditation with you now that we've talked about the stop and take a breath and observe and let it go. Uh, I'd like to, you know, put that together now into a, uh, what we call, um, I'm going to introduce you to someone that I really admire and I find she really, her voice helps. Uh, she does wonderful meditations. Many of you may know her. Her name is Tara Brock, T-A-R-A-B-R-A-C-H. And uh, she has guided meditations and uh, she also has a script a lot of times to go with those. Um, and she does something called RAIN, R-A-I-N. Uh, and I'm going to sort of uh, walk you through that today. It's very similar to the stop sign that you saw just earlier. The, uh, if Stephanie can show that again, that stop. Um, we're going to do something that's very similar to that, except it's going to be R-A-I-N, RAIN, Recognize, Allow, Investigate, and Non-Judgmental. Um, and uh, so if I uh, would invite you to kind of get comfortable whatever that looks like for you. Um, please uh, make yourself very comfortable. Whether that be sitting in a chair, lying on your, on your uh, bed, or um, if you're on a yoga mat, or wherever, whatever that looks like. So sitting quietly, I invite you to close your eyes, take the full, full breaths. Notice the shoulders go up and down. Mm -hmm. 
Notice that your belly is rising and falling. And with every exhale, let's see if you can soften somewhere where you're holding tension. Are you holding tension in the shoulders, the neck, the jaw? Notice your tongue. Just relax the tongue, relax the jaw, relax the space between your eyebrows. Relax your fingers. If you're clenching your fingers, relax your toes, your quads, your lower back. Anywhere where you're noticing tension. Just see if you can breathe in and bring love and compassion and energy to that area. As your mind wanders, Allow the thoughts to come in without judgment. And on the exhale, just let them go. I invite you to match your inhales with your exhales. So in other words, again, try not to control. This is very natural, but if you can breathe in and on your own count to three, like, and then on the exhale, count to three. Sometimes we don't realize that we're choppy. We're choppy breathers. We want that natural fluid breath. Bring your mind to a current situation in which you feel stuck and elicits a difficult reaction, which often with those emotions is anger, fear, hopelessness, uncertainty. Addiction, financial issues, relationship problems. Take some time, take some breaths to enter the experience. Recognize what is happening. What am I feeling inside me right now? What sensations am I most aware of? What emotions? What is in your mind filled with churning thoughts? Just recognize. Take a moment to become aware of this situation. Can you feel the experience? Can you feel how it's living in your heart and your body as well as in your mind? Can you put a name to it? Allow it to be. So the R is recognizing, the A in rain, allowing it just to be. Just find that pause and allow it to be. Accept these moments. You can say, yes, I feel them. Yes, I recognize them. Or maybe I know they're there, but I just can't name them yet. That's okay. No judgment. Mindfulness is acceptance without judgment. You might find yourself saying yes to a huge inner no to a body and mind painfully contracted and you might be resisting and that's okay. You might be saying yes to a part of your body or something in your thoughts that's saying, I hate this right now. This is a natural part of the process. So at this point, you are noticing, not judging, or trying to push away or control, or just allowing. So we recognized and we allowed.
Now we're going to investigate. Before we investigate, just be mindful of your body. Continue inhaling and exhaling, bringing softness to those areas that have resistance or tension. So let's begin to explore what you're experiencing more closely, calling on your natural interests and curiosity about your body. You might ask yourself, what about this wants my attention? What most wants my acceptance? Pose your questions gently, inner voice kind and inviting. Are you feeling heat, tightness, pressure, aches, squeezing? When you have found the most intense part of your physical experience, bring it to your face letting your expression mirror and even exaggerate what you are, emotions you have fe you are feeling. Is it fear, anger, grief, shame? As you continue to investigate, you might ask yourself, what am I believing? This leads to a lot of thinking. Try not to overthink it. that you'll never be happy, that the world will never be the same again, that we're not going to get through this. Tightness, soreness, hollowness, burning. Allow yourself to be with this difficult experience. As you contact and allow what is happening, are you noticing that just allowing it without judgment, however, discomforting it might be. It might even allow you to soften and accept. Or does it bring up even more tension? Does it intensify what you are feeling? What do you need right now? Do you need understanding, acceptance, company, forgiveness, love? Put words so that you can not judge what you're feeling or what you need. So we're recognizing, we're allowing it, we're investigating it, and now we're going to nurture ourselves because mindfulness can't happen without compassion and non-judgment and love. So with this vulnerability, we need to remember that we must let ourselves attend to our most awake and wise heart. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Sometimes here we often place our hands on our heart. I'm here. here I'm here in the present moment and I'm safe as you offer this unconditional kind presence to your inner life sense the possibility of relaxing back and being aware being that awareness feel the tenderness Can you sense how who you are is not identified or hitched to any particular fear or anger or hurt? Mm -hmm. 
Take some moments, as long as you'd like, to simply rest in this spacious and kind awareness, allowing whatever arises in your body to freely come and go. Know this natural awareness is the innermost truth of what you are. So that activity was, um, again, another way of, of, of just trying to recognize, allow, and name. It's important, as, as Stephanie said, when we name it, we can tame it. And then offering some compassion and love and non-judgment to ourselves. Um, and at the same time, being aware of our body and where we need to, 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 to uh, um, bring some breaths and some, some, some love and compassion to different parts of our body because we're some, some, some of us, we handle the anxiety and stress with shoulders or jaws, our back, you know, and we clench uh, and, and just, you know, loosening and uh, trying to offer more space to those parts of the body. Um, so if we go to slide with breath, so breathing again is that you know, we've practiced this today, uh, breathing and, and even if you just take a, a minute or two each day, just to be attuned to your breath and, and try to match your in, out breaths with your, with your in breaths. It, and, and it allows you just to kind of uh, uh, not just, not just how often do we go through the day without even recognizing that we're breathing and as a society we tend to be uh, uh, what we call top lung breathers we tend not to breathe profoundly into our into our bellies and so the more we can use the balloon analogy of blowing up a balloon and releasing the air in the balloon that allows us to really get those big inhales and exhales um, trusting and uh, the next slide, trust. Um, trusting and, and uh, taking responsibility for being you and accepting who you are and listening to yourself and trusting your own being. Uh, the more that you trust yourself, the easier it will be to trust other people and see their basic goodness, um, um, even if we make mistakes along the way. Um, I have... Um, um, I found, I found this really interesting um, article here, especially because now we're on the next slide of letting go. Um, and we'd asked you um, uh, how you were feeling and, and uh, you know, how uh, back in the, the earlier part of the presentation and, and um, we talked about uh, many people are feeling uh, grief right now and it's, it's uh, it would be very normal if if you were if you were feeling that that grief and it's really um you know because we're uncertain and the grief of what we've lost and what's to come um it's difficult to bring to be in the present to come to the present when we're feeling that that sense of uh, grief i'm not going to read the whole thing to you because i know we want to save some time for questions and answers um but um I love this thing right here. It's a good time to stock up on compassion. Everyone will have different levels of fear and grief and as it manifests in different ways. A coworker got very snippy with me the other day and I thought that's not like this person. That's not how that's, this is how they're dealing with COVID-19. I'm seeing their fear and anxiety. So be patient. Think about someone uh, usually think, think about who someone usually is and not who, they seem to be at, at the moment. Um, this is a temporary state. It helps to say it. So this is temporary. Um, this is survivable. We will survive. This is a time to overprotect, but not overreact. And I believe as we go through the five stages of grief, I'm going to show you these right here. Um, if you can see them, we have, you know, a lot of us were in denial and then uh, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, uh, and being mindful maybe of where we are in that because with that becomes different, different, different emotional responses. Um, 
is uh, what I like about this one is finding meaning. This, the, this, this is about adding a sixth stage to the stages of grief is finding meaning. And um, uh, um, it's about, uh, um, you know, finding meaning of, of what's, what's uh, going to come out of this and finding meaning in today, being mindful of what's important for us today and what do we have to be grateful for for today. Um, and so uh, that brings us to our, our last slide. Um, and then we wanted to have some time for questions and answers, I believe, Stephanie. Yeah, definitely we did. And, and just before we move on to the questions and answers, I, I want to say um, if any time like you have questions after this period um, and after this webinar, you can reach out to our, our clinical supervisor. So she's a licensed counseling therapist as well as a traumatologist. Um, and the website is, is here. So you can go to that website or, uh, and, and get in touch with her there. Um, um, as well as sign up for the other webinars that are happening through CMHA and just follow us on Instagram um, as well. And so I just, uh, we just want to open it up for any questions. Um, I did notice um, Faith had mentioned that she uses an app called um, Dalio, where it's a mood tracking app. And she even just pointed out that when she uses this app, it, it made her realize that she focuses on the negative and now she can start to see the good days as well as the negative. So that's, that's a good way of, of practicing being mindful and having something to intentionally remind you uh, of being mindful. So um, Emily said, um, her and a friend each share like three things that they're grateful for and thankful for with each other every day um, and using like a gr gratitude based um, mm -hmm. to help think more positively that's I, I suggest that to clients all the time and do that in my own life I really I really like that technique mm. I do mindful application on hand lotion there's one for anxiousness so I apply it massage each finger and joint uh, and smell it on my hands a few times uh, while doing so excellent it's interesting that you brought that one up because I just just did that. <laughs> That's a way that I uh, practice mindfulness as well. Yeah, and with all the hand washing that we're encouraged to do, the 20 seconds, uh, I have to admit I wasn't someone who did 20 seconds, and, and now I'm really mindful of, okay, I'm going to wash my hands, top, bottom, you know, and uh, I'm trying to be mindful of how the water feels on my hands and the soap as well. Mm -hmm. Essential oils is another good one. Mm -hmm. Doing the, when I'm doing the dishes, breathing at night, uh, reading a book. That's not work related. That's a good one. Reading a book that's not work related. Find out my thoughts are racing before bed. Mindfulness walking. Actually, thank you, Miranda. That's um, um, that's a, uh, I wanted to talk to. I wanted that was something I wanted to, to bring up. Uh, we are we are allowed to um, and encouraged to walk. Uh, you know, uh, either with practicing uh, physical distance or with our with our family. Uh, you know, these are things we can control. Uh, we can we we when we're outside. We can you know look around, see what we can see, what we can feel on our, you know, the road on our feet, the trail on our feet, uh, what we can smell. Uh, those are using those five senses. Those might be things that we can use to, you know, our, so what we can see uh, here. Uh, they certainly will help in terms of, of grounding us and being mindful when we're walking outside if, if, or just going out on your deck. If that's the case if you're if you are uh, in, uh, in uh, self-isolation or you're quarantining right now um faith just uh re like she elaborated more on um the challenging her thoughts so a few questions that she asks herself which i think are great questions by the way are like what are the evidence that my thought is true um what is um what is the evidence that it is not true have i confused it, a thought with a fact um, what would I tell a friend if he had the same thought? Um, what would a friend say about my thought? Am I 100% sure that blank will happen? How many times has blank happened before? Is blank so important that my future depends on it? Mm -hmm. um, this is my personal favorite, the next question, and that's what is the worst that could happen? Um, I ask myself that when I make big decisions because thinking about the worst thing that could happen is a good way of preparing yourself for the worst, but also um, like 
when you think about what the worst thing that can happen is, you know it. So you already know what it is and that allows you to, to move forward. Um, and then another one is, if it did happen, what could I do to cope or handle it? And again, that's mindfulness. That's, uh, is thinking about your reaction before you are even in that position. That's great, Faith. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, and just yeah. bringing it to the free apps. That's great as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, taking the dogs for a walk in the afternoon, uh, you go at their pace. Uh, I have uh, two dogs and one of them uh, hates walking. It's, uh, it's very slow and that, that used to be very difficult for me. It still is at times, but when I, I feel that uh, it really does slow the pace, slow things down and, uh, and definitely um, never leave a spot until they are done sniffing. Then I do mindful walking during these times, wonderful. Because many of us do have pets and they need to be walked and it's good for them and it's good for us right now to, to have the, even if those walks are in, in our backyard. And, you know, again, just reiterating uh, the fact that, uh, you know, we can be mindful of, of, of uh, challenging those thoughts, creating a structure within our day, creating a routine, uh, having those healthy behaviors such as, you know, getting the proper sleep, uh, eating, um, um, eating healthy foods, uh, challenging the thoughts, challenging those thoughts. Are they real? Uh, you know, are they, are they rational? Um, practicing those safe practices, your know, hand washing, uh, physical distancing. So those are things that we can control. Uh, focusing on, on the now, the present, uh, social connectedness. So, you know, FaceTiming, texting, uh, as even as much as we are, uh, that will definitely uh, help us stay stay connected. Reaching out to people that you know are um, are, are are in need, uh, especially if there's people living alone, and if and if we're not, you know, making that you know, I have a couple of, uh, of friends who are retired and uh, and so uh, and, and they're alone. So when I go for groceries, that's something that you know I'm going to pick up some things for them. Volunteering. Uh, in terms of you know helping our neighbors out right now, that's a way that can kind of take us out of our state of, of of oh my God you know and helping other people gives us that serotonin what actually we, which makes us feel better, uh, and those are things that we can control as well. We have wind chimes on my porch, uh, me mindfulling of how they sound, which one they are, um, and so that's uh, that's that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And again, just reiterating the the fear and the anxiety is is real. It, it it's gonna continue and and be up and down. And it's just um, accepting that natural flow of sometimes we're gonna be more anxious than others, and just um, being aware of how we're responding to that. So are we responding to the anxiety by going on Facebook and doing a ton of research, or going on social media, or are we responding by taking a moment to breathe and bring ourselves back into the present? Yeah, and, and another uh, woman, like, so having to stop thinking, like, what should I do and stop worrying about what others think I should do. That, that's really difficult. That's difficult for all of us to do. And I think that's a struggle that all of us will continue to have going forward. Um, but, and, and recognizing the normalcy of that, like, that's a normal response. Like, and a lot of us experience that. And just reminding ourselves when we notice those thoughts, that's that being aware part. We're aware that they're happening. And then being aware that we also can and be okay with ourselves. Like, are we okay with how we're acting? Are, are we okay with what we're doing? Because if so, then like, it's okay to be aware of other people, but we don't necessarily need to change our reactions as long as we're okay with it. And just checking in with ourselves. All right, guys, it's been really great talking with all of you and, and going through this webinar. And I've appreciated all of your reflections. And they were really, really meaningful. Um, and you had some really great thoughts. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Yeah, um, we hope so. It was helpful. Yes. And thank you for the compliments. We appreciate that as well. <laughs> um, again, if you need to um, follow up with us in the next few days, just go to our website and you can connect with our supervisor. And if you want to register for the upcoming webinars, make sure to connect with the Canadian Mental Health Association of New Brunswick and, and they can get you registered for the upcoming seminars. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you again for the compliments, and we're happy that these were, were much uh, graded needed uh, reminders. Remember, it's all about the intent to be mindful and just be kind to yourselves.
Have a great day, everyone.